hope you are well. So it's just a quick intro to the video uh, monthlies that I'm putting out. Uh, it's just a couple of things that I wanted to mention because um, I said about them in Leo and Aries and Sagittarius. So I'm going to make it really quick because um, it's going to be on the front of all the videos. <laughs> um, and I uh, also got to say that if you wanted to get a reading, all my details are in the description box below video or Skype session. <clears throat> Excuse me. So firstly, uh, Leo um, said they might have to go through something that's a, like a huge let go. So um, I've been through loads of emotional let goes on this journey, a lot to do with my mum and my dad and the fact that they are both dead and stuff like that. So I had this really weird experience last month, February. Um, I've also had to watch horror films because I've got to learn to not be afraid of anything, right? And I had to stop watching horror films years ago because they scare me. So <laughs> um, I downloaded a few of them and I was sat there and I watched two. One was really stupid, the other was really boring, not scary at all. So I put on this other one, funnily enough, it was called Hereditary. And also only watched about half of it because I couldn't quite understand what was going on and I just found it a bit like mildly creepy and boring um but it was about family wasn't it so as i turned it off what happened was i um found myself sitting on the sofa i found myself sat in between my mum and my dad who are both uh passed over and my mum was sat there looking at me and my father was i was holding his hand and when i was a little girl i used to sit in between them on the sofa just like this right um, and it was like I went right back to childhood, so I became small in size, <laughs> just like I would have been when I was maybe six or seven years old. So, um, and that was, it was the biggest let go I've, I've been through. And yeah, well, we don't know if there's another one. Hopefully not, eh? But that was um, like just last month, so I've got a feeling like Leo is going to be going through something like that. And what was different about it was that I've seen... A, a lot, you know, and I've seen through the matrix and I've seen that things are, that phys uh, phys look physically real aren't real. So I understand that the vibrational reality is the real reality, right? But this was just, I've never been like that with people before that were, uh, that are no longer in the physical. So feeling them, you know, holding my dad's hand or whatever. So that was a massive experience in experiencing the vibrational reality that exists right and how real it is so just wanted to say that and then also it's a new moon today and uh Aries has talked about them having to deal with triggers or something like that well I've got an Aries moon myself so uh this morning I didn't think I was going to do anything because it's a moon day and I thought I was just going to relax take it easy maybe do these readings um if I felt like it and um then I thought the most thing I'm going to do is put on some laundry and of course, halfway through doing the laundry, the laundry, the washing machine broke down, filled with water, and it wouldn't spin or or drain. So, um, and it's a moon day. And what's crazy about that is that on a moon day, a dark moon, uh, you would think you my triggers are normally huge, right? I can get really irritable, really angry, really stressed. And I just didn't. I just literally just have remained calm throughout. So it's just really interesting um, that that happened on a moon day. So and everything's meant to happen, obviously, the way it's meant to happen. So just to say that, because if you get that going on, you know, uh, literally I'm out the, end, out the other end of that and laughing about it and seeing it as a really positive thing that I didn't get triggered about that. Um, even though it ended up with water all over the kitchen floor and me doing my spinning and rinsing at my neighbour's house <laughs> and all this stuff, right? There was literally, I'm just laughing about it. Uh, so that's it, really. So wishing you all the best for the month and lots of love and take care. See you later. Bye, everyone. I hope you're well. So this is going to be some monthlies for March 2020, 20, 2022. Um, and we're going to start with the, I'm going to do videos for each um, group of signs. Um, so we're going to start with, what are we going to start with? Um, where are we? 
we are in March. Oh, it's Pisces. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start with Pisces. Right, so I've got my eyes closed, as I always do when I shuffle, and I can see the Six of Pentacles card in my head, so that's a card of reaching out. It's a physical card. It's somebody making contact with somebody in the physical dimension. Um... And I've got a lot of masculine energy around this card as well. So I've got the King of Pentacles showing up. He's upside down in the visual. So someone that maybe you've been waiting for a call for Pisces or call from. Let's have a look and see what they want to say. Uh, they're talking about growth. They're talking about sense of humour having fun uh, three of wands which is something that you're waiting for something on the horizon something that has not turned up yet it's upside down so it would state that it's something that's still purely energetic and it hasn't come into form yet sun good so everything coming good around that so really good energy so that will be your vibration is really good in relation to that so that would state that you perhaps let go of it uh, even though you maybe know it's coming, you've let go of it. And one more on that. Destiny, judgment card. So, destined arrival, perhaps, of this person that you've been waiting for this month. Uh, is what's coming up with that. All down to you is what they're saying. So, it's all down to you and the state that you're in and the vibration that you're in. And being in a um, complementary vibration to what you want. So the feeling good and the let go of, you know, feeling good and having let go of what you want. <laughs> uh, and underneath all that, you can still know it's coming, right? It's just that you stop focusing on it coming and you start focusing on other things. So perhaps that's what you've done because where this is upside down as well, three of wands would state that it's coming, but you're not looking for it anymore. Right. So, you know, it's coming vibrationally down to your vibration and it's your destiny, <laughs> but you just kind of turned away from it focused on other things you got birds in that picture as well can you see these cards birds in the picture which is about sign of letting go as well so that you would have let go of this i'm going to get one more down on that pisces <clears throat> final card oh <laughs> ace of wands so that's your vibration so that's vibrational accuracy being located in your at your point of attraction which is feeling good, as you know, because you probably listened to me say that about a million times. <laughs> so that's when your dest all your destiny starts to come in. I mean, you've got a lot of destiny, right? We've got destiny from the dark, and we've got destiny from the light. Uh, every you know, everything essentially is destined, right? You've got everything that shows up to to bring you towards your des your ultimate destiny, your final dest destination. Although nothing's a final destination, but if there's something that you've been waiting for that you know is coming, that is down to vibration, which is what all that is saying there, right? The, you, you can't ever fully, I mean, the let go is just the feeling good. You go into feeling good instead of feeling bad, right? So it's like the final arrival of the thing that you know is coming that hasn't come because you haven't been in the vibrational accuracy for it to arrive. So all the other destinies that come are part of your culmination point of being in your point of attraction, basically. So they're saying you're in your point of attraction this month, Pisces. So that's it. We're going to leave it at that. For Pisces. <clears throat> and then the next one is going to be Cancer. Cancer. All right, so we've got the Tower, which is an ending. Dramatic shift point, something finalization, they're saying. Um, I just need to close my eyes because I didn't close my eyes for you to see if there's a visual, so let me just do that. <sighs> ah, okay, so they are showing like a cloud with a silver lining. Um, so I think that's what this is representing actually. It's like the end of something that's been maybe a hardship that you've been going through. They're talking about um, you en an ending, you're ending a part of your um, your process, your kind of um, your travels, your existence through your current lifetime that have been rather negative and unproductive, as in you've not been receiving 
from that, you know, like Pisces, they talk about the point of attraction and receiving the good that comes from that, like all from the positive end of the stick. Um, they're saying here that you have been through a period where you've not been receiving from that positive end of the stick. And uh, that's about to change. This is about change, the tower. Creation, three of pentacles. So everything that you've been through has actually been about creating what you're going to bring to yourself in the physical Right, so this is the transformation of dark to light that you've been through, the cloud with the silver lining, the arrival in the light, and what's coming from the, what you've created already that you've put into your vibration is not far off because it's upside down, the three of pentacles, so it's stated it's not come in yet, but it's on its way because it is a three and three is creation, it's a physical dimension, so therefore it will arrive in the physical. Maybe not this month, but maybe, you're, you know, your progress is getting... They're saying like you're um, you're on your way out of the old program, and you're on your way out of the dark, and you're coming into the light. So you're on your way into like bringing to yourself more from the light than from the dark. Ending in the mind, ten of swords. So that is what that's come from basically. And if you have, have you got anything going on in your mind? You don't you shouldn't have anything going on in your mind. All right, that means nothing at all. So um, maybe, you know, depending where you're at, because if you're only halfway through this process of coming out of the dark and into the light, you won't even understand when I say that. You're like, well, how can I have nothing going on in my mind? <laughs> but you will understand by the time you get to the point where you, you have nothing going on in your mind, that that is the final answer to everything. Uh, so it is kind of like an all automatic, essential activity of the law of attraction is to be in a state of no mind and your process what you're creating here is going to be first of all a state of no mind all right so everything that comes from the transition of dark to light comes the final location inside of you is a state of no mind so it comes in the you can view it inside yourself before you see the, the fruition outside of self so before say you see a person coming along in a physical, you will, um, you will uh, uh, experience a state of no mind in regard to absolutely everything that could occur in your life in reflection to anything else that could be coming down the path, basically. Queen of Wands, which is creation as well. She's number three and it's vibration. So cre creation of your vibration, basically. Right. I mean, everything is energy. So you could say, well, what does that mean? Because everything is energy. So what do you mean creation of vibration? Because you're already vibration, right? But there's only one thing that matters in vibration, and that's vibrational accuracy. It's a location for the point of attraction, uh, receiving from that point of attraction that is vibrational accuracy, that is the getting everything you want back. <laughs> so you're in process of creating not only in the physical what you bring to yourself, but your vibration that you bring it from. And again, everything hinges and is harnessed into a state of no mind. Because to achieve that vibration is a state, you have to have a state of no mind. You could say, well, no worry and no fear. And that's true. It's no worry and no fear. But it's, you know, where does that buck end, really? It ends when it ends, when it ends, when it ends, when it ends, when there's nothing left at all of it. And by the time you see this, you'll have the intro to this whole uh month's reading which I'm going to tell something that happened to me this morning which will ex which will give you an example of that so that's just you'll already had that <laughs> by the time you see this okay so we're moving on to the next one so that's about your state of no mind I'd just get one more let's see if they're asking you to do anything but I don't believe so I think it's just a talking about your trajectory one more out <sighs> yeah timing so it's all in good timing right Wheel of Fortune is timing, so it's nothing, it's not like they're telling you anything to do, there's no hardship involved, they're just telling you how it is, alright, so just know that it will come about from a state of no mind and an, uh, uh, achieving an adequate example of vibration, right, which might sound a bit weird, because weird, you would be like, well, what's that? <laughs> That's you living in physical form, aligned with your point of attraction, so we're all energy, primarily, predominantly, and forever, and we're only physical for a short amount of time. The physical doesn't really matter. You could take off the old meat suit and you could throw it across the room and you could let it go. People do that and they call it dying, right? But you still exist. 
you still are there all the time, exactly as you are always, vibrationally, right? So um, uh, you'll find out what it is, basically. All in good time, all in good time, the Wheel of Fortune, right? And then the next one, we're looking, going to look at Scorpio. Just um, close my eyes this time, take a few breaths. What do we need to know for Scorpio? Right, so I have got, um, uh, right, this is sounds a bit weird, the way it's appearing. It's like a combination of the Four of Swords, which is about resting your mind, and a load of pentacles, which is like, uh, abundance basically kind of together looking like a cloud of pentacles with the swords raining down um, so it's like on a person basically like you're walking along like it's rain in a cloud um, so it's like something that's going to be following you around this month basically <laughs> in terms of the mental aspect and what can be achieved in the, uh, drawing abundance in the physical world through that state of no mind that they were just talking about in cancer right however it's following you around so it's like you're going about your daily activities and you're not going to be able to get away from this matter of fact which is that a state of no mind brings abundance let's get some cards out um king of pentacles so got this man whoever he is might be someone you're involved with maybe it's someone you think about he's physically manifest so i presume he's in his in his is in his uh, also in his meat suit walking around <laughs> Uh, could be a woman that operates from a masculine template. Uh, could be a man that operates from a masculine template. Whoever they are, they're operating from a masculine template, so they're very masculine. And um, this is someone that maybe use, your mind is on. Or maybe there is, you know, if it's your twin flame, your mind will go on and off them because that's the inevitability of that. So let's get another card and see what this is about. Oh, look, there we've got the mind coming out, Ace of Swords. So this is kind of like, um, it's clarity of mind, right? You could say Ace of Swords, well, it's just a one. So it's just one thing in the mind. So you might have one thing on your mind. Maybe it's this person. Maybe that's what they're saying, right? However, it's like um, Twin Flame, right? What they're talking about, it's like Twin Flame process. We're told to let go, okay, which is, is an inevitability, so we're told to let go to assist us in that inevitability that we will let go and know that it's all right to do that and not to worry that that is wrong and not to think, well, if I let go of that person, they're not going to come along, right? If I let go of thinking about that person, then what's going to happen? I'm going to forget about them. They're never going to come along and then it, will, it won't be anything, right? But actually the let go, when they say let go, is to assure you that if you do let go mentally of that person, that person is still going to be along, they're still coming along. You don't have to focus on it all the time, right? So it could be saying that to you if that's the case that you're going through. But also the other thing is that you will periodically think about that person whether you want to or not because that person is you're connected to through the mind. So at sometimes though it's almost like you're taken over by thoughts of them and by their thoughts even and the way they're thinking and how they're thinking and it's like you're walking in their shoes basically at times through what goes on inside of you and here they're talking about the mind and so they were in the visual right uh, there it is the five of cups which is what cannot be forgotten that love, love exists right even though you can't see it in the physical around you it still emotionally exists so perhaps some of you are going to be feeling this person coming through you their thoughts Perhaps some of you are going to be feeling like you know exactly what's going on, like how they're feeling and how they're thinking, and because um, at the actually at the end of the process, your everything is about how they're thinking and feeling all along through the process. But at the end of it, you can quite clearly see, and this is also clarity, quite clearly understand, know what is that it is all them basically. It's all them coming through you. Right, one more on that to clarify anything else. Moon. Well, we're in the moon right now today, so I would say that you're feeling them coming through right now today. If you're not if you're not acknowledging that or you don't understand that, just um, it's like when you get into a something funny happens, right? Like you could be feeling fine, absolutely fine, and then all of a sudden, out of the blue, which is what the moon brings, because it brings things out of the blue, it will bring along something that is 
completely opposite to how you're feeling. Like you could be feeling fine and then suddenly you're feeling like torn apart and terrible and like angry and disheveled and filled with worry and fear and anxiety. And when that happens, it's them coming through your mind, all right, and your emotions. So that's when it comes out of the blue. All right, so maybe you're going to get that this moon. Uh, I would just say that really because it's really talking about Pisces time and the next moon. By the time I think we get to the next moon, we're going to be out of Pisces. Uh, well, it's not a Pisces moon. It's a Virgo moon, I think, the full moon. So I would just say that this is talking about this moon because this is a masculine moon, right? Um, anyway, I'll leave it at that. I hope that makes some sense to you. Just understand, it's just to like to um, be in a state of let go around whatever it is that you go through and not beat yourself up about it. Not be like, well, you know, I should be feeling okay. I don't like not feeling okay because sometimes it's the other person coming through you so you can't really do anything about it. Okay, so that's it for the water signs and then I'll be back with the next one. If you wanted to get personal reading, all the details are in the box below. Lots of love. Take care. Bye.